say you're a coffee drinker like me. When you go to your local coffee shop for some drip coffee or an espresso, chances are you're going to find one or more of these behind the bar. This is a coffee grinder, and when you order your coffee, you will likely see it being ground in one of these immediately before brewing. Contrast this to the coffee available at your local supermarket. Some of the coffee on the shelves might be whole bean, but far more of it comes already ground. Retail sales data supports that pre-ground coffee is far more commonly used at home, at least in the United States. So why doesn't the coffee shop pre-grind their coffee? Is there anything to be gained by grinding coffee right before brewing? Coffee grinders for home use are available at a variety of price points. Which one should you use? In this BevGeek video, we're going to take a look at grinding coffee at home. First, we need to talk about coffee beans. For starters, they're not really beans. They are seeds from the coffee plant. These seeds are roasted to bring about chemical and physical changes resulting in the coffee flavor we're familiar with. However, steeping whole coffee beans in hot water is not very practical. These seeds are relatively thick, making it difficult for water to enter so it can extract all of that coffee goodness, resulting in a very weak brew. Contrast this to tea leaves, which are much thinner, making it easier for water to penetrate even in their whole leaf form. As such, the coffee beans need to be ground into smaller pieces before brewing. However, there are some important things that happen to coffee beans when they're ground. During the roasting process, carbon dioxide gas is generated inside the beans as a result of chemical reactions that occur at high temperatures. When in its whole bean form, most of this carbon dioxide remains trapped inside the bean, dissipating very slowly as the roasted coffee is stored. Once coffee is ground, all that carbon dioxide escapes much faster. This loss isn't a concern by itself, but as the carbon dioxide escapes, other volatile compounds within the coffee also escape. These compounds constitute what we smell in a freshly brewed cup of coffee and is a major component of a coffee's flavor. As with the carbon dioxide, these volatile compounds escape slower while in whole bean form and faster once the coffee is ground. So the longer you wait between grinding coffee and brewing coffee, the more flavor is lost in your finished beverage. Coincidentally, this also makes your coffee grinder the best smelling place in your house. There are some other things to consider about grinding coffee, such as particle size. If the particle sizes are too large for your brewing method, your coffee will be under-extracted, which usually leads to a more sour-tasting brew. This is because the acids present in coffee are extracted early in the brewing process, leading under-extracted coffee to have a higher proportion of acids in the finished beverage. If the particles are too small, the coffee will be over-extracted, leading to a more bitter flavor as more of the late-extracted, bitter compounds are present. If the particle sizes are uneven, you will have some coffee that is over-extracted and some that is under-extracted, so the quality of your brewed coffee will be noticeably inconsistent. As an example, vegetables cut into equal-sized pieces will cook evenly and will finish cooking at the same time, whereas vegetables cut into unequal pieces will not. Grind size with coffee works much in the same way. While we're discussing grind size, we should also mention coffee fines, which is the dust created from coffee beans when ground. Fines are generated in all coffee grinders, but some generate more fines than others. As fines are very small, they extract quickly, so their extraction does not have a huge effect on the brew. However, they do act as a sort of flow restrictor in drip brewers with paper filters, as well as in espresso machines. The more fines you have, the slower your brew time is, and the more extraction you get from the rest of the grounds. Conversely, less fines results in a faster brew, with less extraction. Fines don't have a flow restriction affecting coffee presses or other brewers with metal filters, but can remain in your coffee if they aren't decanted out. So let's say you've decided to get a coffee grinder. The fancy ones at your local coffee shop are probably out of the question, unless you have thousands of dollars to spend on one. In order to decide which grinder to get, First, we need to take a look at the different types out there. First up is the blade grinder. As the name suggests, this uses blades to chop up the coffee beans. These are pretty straightforward, as these are essentially a smaller version of a food processor. The advantage of these is their price. Attaching two blades to a small electric motor is pretty easy to do, so these can be made and sold at a very low cost. Their disadvantage is inconsistency. When you grind coffee with these, it is impossible to create coffee grounds with equal sized particles, which means that your coffee will not brew with any consistency. Next up are the burr grinders. Burrs are raised edges on an object, and in a burr grinder, there are two pieces with burrs, one stationary and one moving, that act to chop the coffee beans into grounds. 
since the two bird pieces remain the same distance away from each other during the grinding process, they will cut their grounds to an even size, leading to more consistency from brew to brew. Nearly all burr grinders allow you to change this distance to adjust grind size for different brewing methods. The disadvantage of burr grinders is their cost. As it is more difficult to machine burrs than it is blades, burr grinders will cost significantly more than blade grinders. While blade grinders tend to cost about 15 to 30 US dollars, electric burr grinders typically start at about $100 and some high-end home grinders can cost close to $1,000 or even more. There are two subsets of burr grinders, those that use conical burrs and those that have flat burrs. While researching conical and flat burr grinders on the internet, I could find no real consensus as to which one was better, but in general, conical burr grinders tend to be less expensive and in general, flat burr grinders tend to be preferred for grinding coffee for espresso. The coffee grinder rabbit hole goes fairly deep. There are different materials used for the bird pieces, different designs for the burrs themselves, and even different motor speeds available. There are also hand cranked burr grinders that are available for a lower cost. For the sake of simplicity, I'll leave those out of this discussion and save them potentially for another video. I decided to test out some grinders to see how consistent the grind sizes really are. As it so happens, I still have a couple of old grinders kicking around. This blade grinder and a mid-range conical burr grinder, as well as this upmarket flat burr grinder that I currently use. I picked up a couple of coffees from a local roaster, a light roasted Ethiopian coffee and a medium roast from Central America, and ground them with all three grinders to a similar grind size. To measure grind consistency, I took a small sieve and sifted and sifted and sifted until I had the grounds from each grinding sorted out into groups about 100 microns apart. I then charted the results. As expected, the blade grinder gave a very wide range of particle sizes. There were hardly any identifiable peaks in the distribution, and when doing the initial sift, found that there were a lot of very large pieces in the grounds, which are commonly called boulders. With the mid-range burr grinder, there was also a noticeable size range, but much narrower than with the blade grinder, this time with a clearly defined peak. There were a few boulders, but not nearly as many as with the blade grinder. With the high-end burr grinder, the size range was very tight. There were few grounds outside of the main peak, and almost no boulders. So, how does this affect the brewed coffee itself? To find out, I brewed and sampled both coffees on all three grinders. I decided to compare the coffees by cupping them, since I don't have another good way to brew six coffees simultaneously at home. If you're not familiar with cupping coffee, there's a link to the steps I used in the description of this video. Before we proceed, I should note the following. I am not a professional coffee taster. I am not a Q grader. The following results are based on my palate and experience, but your experience may differ. If you try this yourself and have a different opinion, please let me know in the comment section. So when I tried the blade ground Ethiopian coffee, it tasted kind of weak. I did get a bland, sour taste, but not much else. The mid-range burr grinder did taste much brighter, with a clear tangerine flavor present. I got the same with the high-end burr grinder, but the tangerine flavor was stronger. With the blade ground Central American coffee, I got sour flavor again, but with some smokiness this time. The mid-range burr grinder had a nutty flavor, without the sourness in the blade ground coffee. The high-end burr was also nutty, with some subtle sweetness present. Overall, the sourness and the blandness of the blade ground coffees lead me to believe that they were under-extracted. The burr ground coffee was much better. The two burr grinders had similar results to each other, with a slight edge going to the high-end flat burr grinder. However, this difference was subtle at best. I did notice that the mid-range conical burr grinder was messier and required a lot more effort to clean up, for what that's worth. So we know which grinders work best, but is grinding coffee at home actually worth it? To decide, I ran another test using the same two coffees. This time, I pre-ground them with the flat burr grinder and allowed the grounds to sit for five days. I then repeated the cupping, comparing the pre-ground coffee to coffee ground fresh on the flat burr and blade grinders. The pre-ground Ethiopian coffee tasted very bland, with maybe some hints of nuts. The fresh blade ground coffee had a sour lemon flavor, and the fresh burr ground coffee had the same bright tangerine flavor as before. With the pre-ground Central American coffee, it was also bland, 
with some hints of smoke. The fresh blade ground coffee was again sour, with some pecan notes this time, and the fresh burr ground coffee gave some good walnut flavor with a hint of brown sugar. This seems to confirm that pre-ground coffee does lack the flavor of fresh ground coffee. While the blade ground coffees did taste under-extracted, they still had a better flavor than their pre-ground counterparts, with the fresh burr ground coffees still taking the prize. In conclusion, if you are brewing coffee at home and want the most flavor out of your cup, it is definitely worth the time and effort to grind it yourself shortly before you brew. If you can afford to make the $100 investment for a good mid-range burr grinder, your coffee will be noticeably better for it. If you go for a higher end model, you should see some improvement in flavor, but the mid-range model should work well for most people. If your budget only allows for a blade grinder, you will still see a noticeable improvement over pre-ground coffee. In the end, burr ground coffee is better than blade ground coffee, which is better than pre-ground coffee, which is better than no coffee. Thank you so much for watching. If you found the video useful, click the like button. Your support is greatly appreciated. If you want to see more videos like this, click subscribe and the bell icon so you can be notified when new videos are available. Are you a coffee drinker? If so, do you grind your own coffee at home? What kind of grinder do you use? What is your favorite beverage? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks again, and I hope to see you for the next BevGeek video.